All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this open meeting of the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee, which is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and is being held by video conference. Please note this meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Please be aware that people may be able to see you and take care not to share your device's screen. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please silence all phones and devices. Member of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, the town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use their full name or who acts inappropriately. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. I'm Mary Longacre, Chair of the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Fritz McClure. Aye. Gary Beller. Present. Peter Brace. Here. Jen Carber. Here. And if we have other members joining us, we will announce them at that time. We do have a quorum with five members present. Uh, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Vince Murphy. Here. Thank you, Vince. Uh, we do not have anticipated speakers on today's agenda. So before we turn to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear communication and con on conduct of our business. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the list of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute yourself on your phone or computer when you're not speaking. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. And for items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak to the chair. If you're not able to participate in the remote meeting, you may also submit comments to the Coastal Resilience Coordinator, Vince Murphy to be read into the meeting record. His email is vmurphy at nantucket-ma.gov. And finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Uh, Sarah Boyce was able to join us. Sarah, can you give us a quick good morning, hello? Uh, audibly. Good morning, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I do have one note on the agenda. There was a typo. Uh, item three, it says continued discussion from our March 29th. Uh, meeting. We did not meet on the 29th, it was on the 22nd, and we do have that agenda available. Uh, Vince, would you put up the agenda for today on the screen? Uh, let's scroll down a little bit, please. Uh, do you want to make that edit on the screen there, Vince, just so we're not confusing anyone? Great, thank you. Most uh, note, Mary, this is the posted agenda. We've just made it an edit on screen just for the convenience of those here present. Thank you, yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, quick background on this. Um, at our last meeting on the 22nd, I misjudged the time frame for uh, the committee re being required to submit a uh, response to town administration. Uh, so Vince was asked to submit our recommendation early uh, or earlier than I anticipated, <laughs> in other words, before this meeting. Um, so we did have a general consensus, um, was, was Vince and my conclusion after the 22nd, and he felt comfortable submitting the statement um, that is shown on the screen. Um, Vince, if you want to now put up the, the actual statement that you sent to town admin so that we have that for reference. Um, so my apologies to misjudging the timeline, but we are here to um, make any changes to that. This statement is on the select board's agenda for tomorrow. Um, so we definitely want to uh, have a statement adopted at this meeting today. Um, we also had several members who weren't able to join us at the last meeting and uh, wanted to have the opportunity for them to provide input on the statement as well. Um, Vince, is there anything you wanna highlight in this? Um, this is the, the note that you sent to the town administration. Correct. So there's two bullet points on the screen, basically. And I just want to bring up things to people's um, 
reference point. So I was asked to submit something ASAP um, the day after our last meeting. So I think I did this the following day. Um, I think this was sent uh, March 24th, something to that effect. Um, and so and that, me, uh, just noting for the record, Matt Fee has also joined us. Thank you. So there's uh, in request one to, for the committee to become permanent. Mary's already said this, but and I don't mean to re-explain what Mary said, but I had to just put it in writing uh, that this was a consensus based on consensus and that there was no vote, just consensus. I stated that real clear, but I, I want to make sure that the committee uh, agrees with that. And then the second point in here about adding other groups and that the, uh, this is not a, a, a finished conversation by any means, it's not concluded. And um, we're looking at other organizations, um, which is something for the committee to discuss today. Thank you, Vince. Um, so do, does anyone have a, um, how do I put this, um, a reason to edit the statement that's in the quotes in the middle between number one and number two. So Reds, can you put that back on screen? <laughs> So I, I think our, our first order um, would be to decide whether or not to formally adopt the statement that's in quotes. And so for discussion would be whether we want any edits to that. Um, I'll go ahead and read that out into the record in case there are people who aren't able to view that. So the statement that was sent to the select board is a request for the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee to become permanent. Um, I'll also note for the record, uh, Joanna Roach is joining us in the meeting. Um, and so the statement sent was the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee requests permanent establishment for the purpose of continuing its work summarized here from the committee's purpose statement, colon, to recommend the priority of the recommendations from the Coastal Resilience Plan to assist with the coordination of coastal resilience planning, regulations, and projects to, follow, to facilitate community engagement and to monitor climate change data, sea level rise projections, and other communities' coastal resilience efforts. At the select board's discretion, the terms of the at-large members of the committee may be staggered for reappointment. So that, that was our formal request. Um, and then there was the additional note, which we'll get to in a minute. Does anybody have an edit um, for that formal request that we would make at the last minute? Um, or does somebody want to make a motion to uh, approve that statement? Any comments from committee members? I'll make a move to approve the statement. It's Matt. Thank you. Matt, do we have a second? second. Uh, thank you, Joanna. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? If not, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Gary Beller? Aye. Sarah Boyce? Aye. Peter Brace? Aye. Matt Fee? Aye. Jen Carberg? Aye. Chris McClure? Aye. And Mary Longacre, I. We uh, do not have Ian Golding in the meeting. So that is 8 0, I believe. Thank Me you. Thank you, Mary. Oh, and Jen, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, I, was, I was wondering about my eight. I was like, that doesn't quite add up to eight. I apologize for missing you. Um, so, further discussion on the second part uh, that this is an idea that came solely from Vince and me. Um, the idea that we could add additional seats to the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee to have additional representation from the community. Um, our first thought was the Finance Committee uh, or the Capital Projects Committee uh, as one seat and the other seat for the land bank. Uh, again, I wanna stress this was an idea that came from me and from Vince. We're bringing it to the committee. Uh, we do have people who represent those organizations who are present here in the meeting if we have questions for them. Uh, we did reach out to those organizations to find out if they were interested in that participation uh, before we brought it to the committee. Uh, but this is uh, not in anyone else's request. This is an idea that Vince and I had. Um, so we're looking for feedback from committee members. Uh, this is an, an open discussion. Uh, we're happy to hear whatever you think about it. Sarah? Thank you, Mary. Um, I actually, I think this is a great idea. I think especially um, with the precedent of the Conservation Foundation 
foundation having um, representative members, I think that the land bank, as long as there's interest on their part, um, the work that they're already doing in coastal resiliency, as well as the amount of land that they um, they operate uh, or they, they have jurisdiction over, um, I think they would be an asset. Um, and then I also think, um, you know, so many of our discussions have revolved around the finances at this stage. And as we work towards implementation, I just fully support having some member. I mean, we benefit right now with Joanna's knowledge, but as a community member within CRAC and not, rep not specifically representing the finance committee, I think making sure we have that um, representation would be great. So I really support this. Thank you, Sarah. I'll note for the record, Ian Golding was able to join the meeting. Thank you, Ian. Um, and Ian, for your reference, we have formally adopted the paragraph in the center of the screen in quotes, and we're discussing item number two. Um, thank any further thought, thank any you, Mary, further? and thank you, Vince, for your reminder. I apologize for being late. We're glad you're here. Um, other thoughts from other committee members? Matt? Yeah, I think it's I, I think that their, their involvement would be great. The only, and I haven't thought about this yet. The only thing is we've got to make sure that our representation is broad enough that it doesn't become uh, viewed as uh, what's the word as as not you know not adversarial but viewed as uh you know one, one way or the other it has to be viewed as accepted broadly by the community so if we have a lot of people with one viewpoint and you know and sort of other people feel left out then i think we'll we could have trouble getting some of the big things through town meeting so you know and i and i don't have i don't have a, uh, i'm not saying that's what it is but i think we have to be cognizant of that you know before we make that change Thank you, Matt. Um, Jen, and then Peter. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, I agree with the, the points that Sarah had discussed as far as someone from the Finance Committee, and I think it would be really great to have a representative from the Land Bank here, just particularly because they're doing so many of those coastal projects and being um, part of the discussion we're having here would be really important. Um, I don't know if this is, I think it's something we should be clear on. I don't know if we leave it up to the, the land bank as far as representative, but whether or not it's a, a board member versus a staff member might be an, an interesting conversation. And I, I think, you know, the land bank could, could weigh in on that, but, you know, the staff members uh, might be present. You know, the, the board can change over time versus the staff. So I don't know if we want to recommend that it's an actual staff member that's a representative on this committee. That's just a thought. Don't know what the pros and cons are. And then I would put in that it might make sense for us if we're looking at adding additional um, representatives here, if we think about a way to broaden the perspective of the committee, and I'm not sure what exactly that kind of representative is, if it's more at large um, members, but uh, increasing the diversity that's present on this committee, as well as the perspectives tied to different communities on the island might be really it, it that would be something for us to uh, strive to i'm not sure i know the exact group to point to though for that thank you jen uh, peter your comments yes since we are including um we've included most of the conservation organizations uh, that are that are uh, nantucket centric um shouldn't we then invite or have somebody from the land council it would seem to make sense to me i mean i don't know how big we want the committee to be but we could ser certainly benefit from from one of them helping us maybe maybe that would be someone that would be we would invite to the meeting when we needed them but you know um they certainly have the knowledge that we could use thank you Peter. sarah Thank you. Um, I have sort of a combo company, um, comment. I was thinking about um, what Jen and what Pete were just saying. I think that if we, as we add members or you know representation groups, I think that we should think about formalizing the language we use about the invite. Because to Matt's point, um, we don't we want to to 
discuss our reasoning, right? So when my mind, when we were thinking about the land bank, it was more about being a large landowner because that's kind of the, the reasoning that was put forth um, for like the conservation foundation. Um, and, and also like owning critical habitats, like CO2 for the example of like, of um, NCF is like owning CO2 and really vital parts of um, that affect coastal resiliency. So similarly, similarly, if we include the land bank, it'd be like as a large landowner and already taking many actions in climate change. So kind of like formalizing that language, because otherwise, once again, you could say, you know, every um, conservation group then should be a member. And obviously that would get too onerous. Um, I kind of disagree with Pete. There's only one conservation organization right now that's represented on the board. I am a community member. And yes, I work for a conservation organization, but I am not here as a Linda Loring representative. If I, as Sarah Boyce, like don't get renewed or I don't wanna be on the committee anymore, there will no longer be a Linda Loring representative. Same thing with Joanna you know, not to speak for you, but um, so it seems like there's members of different groups, but that's just because there's community interest from, from individuals that happen to work at these organizations. Um, so I just to kind of put that in perspective um, and have on the, the public record that, you know, many of us are, are community members too. Um, and I think with the land council specifically, not to speak for them, we can we can ask them, but as an advocacy group, I don't think that their role is to be on the committee as a representative. I think individually, if we have questions as it relates to work that they do, definitely invite them to a meeting to discuss. I know RJ's on many of these meetings. I don't know actually if he might be on here today. I can't see the whole list, um, but I just think we have to think critically. I, I, I agree with what Jen's saying about broadening um, to increase diversity of thought within the committee, but that we should have a kind of formal way we word it so that it has, um, we're not cherry picking groups, that we are um, like definitive in how we de decide um, the groups that we choose to be part of CRAC. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we'll go to Vince in a second. I, I wanna share a little bit of the reasoning why Vince and I uh, selected these two seats. Uh, first, we're, we're certainly open to the idea of, of more than two seats. Uh, that's something for the committee to discuss and decide. Um, but we wanted to start uh, with the land bank. There, there were two main uh, criteria. The first is that they are a landowner. They are uh, a, a quasi town entity, uh, not just a conservation organization. And they are heavily involved in planning for coastal resilience, uh, as well as many of their properties are downtown where we're focusing our next coastal resilience effort. So it seems like a very good fit to have open communication and involvement between the two groups. With the finance committee, um, you know, again, paying for this is a uh, an essential component of how coastal resilience moves forward. Uh, whether that's the finance committee or the capital programs committee, we, we weren't quite sure um, what the best fit would be, but certainly we've uh, noticed the benefit of having Joanna's connection, although she is a member at large and not officially representing the finance committee. Um, so th that's where we started. Uh, but as I said, we're definitely open to the idea of, of additional seats uh, and think that that's a, a worthy topic for discussion. Uh, Vince, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, just a tiny bit on the land bank side. Mary, you covered it very well. Just the only minor thing I'd like to add to it is, and I'm open to being corrected if I need to be, um, the land bank has, uh, as part of its mission, to purchase uh, wetland areas and wetland resource areas and as sea levels rise, and we're going to see an increase in those, um, it would be beneficial um, for us to be able to communicate some specific things to the land bank in the future, not to guide their decision making or anything to that effect, because that is for their commission to do, but just to bring information to their attention. Thank you, Vince. Gary? I agree with Sarah's comments, and I think that uh, we should just recommend the two the addition of the two organizations that you and Vince have um, have named already. I don't think any any of the others ought to be added. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I'd like to open it up to um, Rachel Freeman, who is here from the Land Bank, and Stephen Welch, who is here from the Capital Program Committee. Uh, do you have comments about the potential for addition uh, to the Coastal Resilience Group Advisory Committee? Rachel? Um, 
Thank you, Mary. Uh, yes, we have discussed this opportunity at the land bank. And if um, the crack committee is in agreement that this is a good idea and the select board is in agreement, we are extremely excited to be involved. We feel like we have a lot of projects and a lot of overlap with coastal resiliency where um, exchange of information is critical. And being involved in a committee such as the CRAC committee would allow us to facilitate that process. And we do work closely with the town to um, and nonprofits. So we're sort of an interesting link between the two types of groups, which provides us with slightly different opportunities. And as been said, you know, we do have um, acquisition interests going forward. So that's another piece of the puzzle. Um, there's just so many different facets that it would be um, that I would see this as just such a great fit for the land bank. And, um, you know, that's actually something that I would be looking to do in the future. So. Thank you, Rachel. I, 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 there was a question of whether it would be a staff member of the land bank or a board member. Um, Vincent, I think, approached it as a staff person, and I think the land bank has as well, uh, just to answer that question. But thank you for bringing that up. That wasn't something that we had considered. Uh, Stephen, do you want to add your comments? Oh, thanks, Mary. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, I would just say, well, a couple quick things. Um, I think uh, Capcom, first of all, thanks you. You give your uh, the breadth and depth of the work you all do and the projects that will be coming are more than sufficiently complex. We're gonna be busy for quite a while um, with these projects. Um, I, I'd suggest that embedding a Capcom member and a FinCom member perspective, um, persons who represent the community and not particular only the Capcom or the FinCom, but have background and experience in their process and understanding of how things work respectively. It seems as it'd be helpful to your committee and, and whomever you select, uh, and certainly therefore the community, which I think is the goal here. Um, I would uh, just keying off some comments that were made earlier, perhaps these new members would be at large members. The idea is to dilute the perspective kind of away from a central or insider kind of uh, uh, committee that Matt seemed to allude to. And then I think lastly, I'd say um, if, if um, from Capcom's perspective, given the magnitude of dollars involved, we'd be more comfortable knowing your process involves a broader group. Um, and at the risk of maybe going um, too broad along the lines of more of a council of sorts, as opposed to a committee. I mean, you're getting to the point with respect to your size that there's um, well, I think the mission doesn't change. I think the perspective of uh, what you all are bringing to the table, which is um, really a council re review and um, advisements, I, I think that's an important consideration, at least from Capcom's um, perspective. It's more an evolution uh, in, in addition to the extension of your committee and evolution of your committee. Um, hope that's uh, clear. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. I, I think that is sort of along the lines of what Vince and I were thinking, but I think you've also given us some new points that uh, the committee should evolve because we, we accomplished that the major goal, which was the creating the Coast Resilience Plan and the needs may be different for what comes next. Um, so I, I appreciate your comments. Uh, I, I do wanna say briefly about the at-large member that is a position chosen from the community. Um, and so those members, I am at large, uh, Joanna Roach and Sarah Boyce, as she mentioned, uh, are the three at large members. And um, we are not officially representing any other organization, whether that's where we work or another committee that we sit on. Um, certainly that those other life experiences inform our contributions to this committee, but it's not something that we can um, reflect as, as an official representation. Uh, whereas what Vince and I are talking about are uh, official representatives from those two organizations. Um, Stephen? Thank you. Uh, Mary, uh, thanks. And just to clarify, my comment about at large was more with respect to um, the membership of the respective committees. So for instance, uh, Capcom or FinCom 
uh, we have uh, members from NPDDC, the Board of Selectmen, so on and so forth. If your members, if membership to this group were um, maybe not restricted, but the preference were that the Capcom member would be an at-large member or the FinCom uh, member to your committee or council would be one of the respective committees at large. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't actually speaking about your structure, more about uh, the individual decentralized associations of the respective committees, members who sign on and participate. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that clarification. I apologize for misunderstanding the comment. Um, uh, Matt, do you have a comment? Yeah, the other way I think we can think about this is I think we're going to end up needing uh, subcommittees for finance and some of the other things fairly soon. I think some members from those, some people from there will become uh, at large members or members of the committee in some manner. So the subgroups could help us get there. My concern is that we not be viewed as an advocacy group. You know, we should be advoc advocating for coastal resiliency, but we should not be viewed as, you know, taking one side of it. If we end up at odds with uh, the real estate committee, for example, you know, real estate industry on island, then it will be hard to get some of the uh, changes that we need as an island, you know, passed politically. So I think we have to make sure that we're inclusive of those views and that people realize that we're doing this, you know, in the best interest of the entire island, including, you know, all of, you know, including them. So I think that's, that's my point is, how do we ensure that we have broad representation, especially from the strong sort of voices on the island? Thank you, Matt. Further comments or questions from committee members? Um, so we, we did, as I said, oh, uh, uh, we're not ready for public comment, Deanne, but I do see your hand. Um, we did, uh, as I said, uh, reach out to the Finance Committee and CAPCOM, um, and one of the items of feedback that we got from the Finance Committee was that they weren't sure that they would be able to fill a seat um, with anyone other than Joanna at the moment, and Joanna is in an at-large seat. So one of the potential complications from this request to add seats would be um, whether or not Joanna would move from an at-large member seat to a finance committee official representation, that it would be Joanna's choice first and foremost, uh, not something that we would uh, request or require. And um, whether um, if Joanna chose to stay in an at-large seat, uh, there would be a finance committee member available. And that was part of the reason for um, asking whether the seat should belong to somebody from Capcom. Um, if Joanna did move, that would open an at-large seat. Uh, it, it sounds like that might be something that we could uh, leverage to increase the uh, scope of representation on the committee. Uh, those are all uh, sort of open questions and not ones that we get to decide as a committee, but I would like to hear if anyone has perspectives on that. Joanna? Um, I just, I don't, I think it matters little uh, whether it goes either way, right? Um, but I do agree that it would be tough to find another person on the FinCom to do this because it's a large time commitment and they've already missed quite a bit. So either way, I'm, I will stay in one capacity or another, <laughs> if that makes sense. We, we appreciate that, Joanna. <laughs> Whatever works best for you all. <laughs> Other thoughts or comments on that? All right, so does anybody want to make a motion to formally request that the select board add two seats, uh, one to be occupied by a member of the Finance Committee or Capital Program Committee? and the other to be occupied by a representative from the land bank staff. I'll so move. Thank you, Gary. Do you have a, thank you, Peter. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, so roll call vote, Gary Beller. Aye. Sarah Boyce. Aye. Peter Brace. Aye. Matt Fee. Aye. Ian Golding. Aye. Jen Carberg. Aye. Fritz McClure. Aye. Joanna Roach. Aye. And Mary Longacre, I thank you. That is unanimous. 
So Vince, will you be able to uh, send that to town administration on our behalf so they can include it in the agenda, hopefully for the select board tomorrow night? Yes. Uh, and there's, I'm, I'm not speaking on the town administration's behalf. It's our hope that they will include it. Uh, and you can take the uh, screen share down. Um, okay, so um, uh, I'll just note for the record that Deanne's hand was taken down. So Deanne, I assume that you no longer want to make a comment, um, but the next item on our agenda is public comment. Uh, Deanne, okay, you do have your hand back up. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I didn't mean to raise my hand at an inappropriate time, but I had a point of information uh, that maybe now is moot because you've already taken a vote. But um, during my involvement in the community, especially when we had the town government study committee, there was a lot of discussion about the role of the finance committee. And according to the town charter, the finance committee is to do an independent review. The role of the finance committee is to do an independent review of the warrant and make recommendations to town meetings. And because of that, any representation from the finance committee to any other committees has been discouraged. And I just went on the town website to look. I know there is a representative um, to the capital program committee and I think the contract review committee and perhaps um, Johanna or Stephen can correct me, but I just wanted to raise that issue so that it my understanding is it is not regular practice for the finance committee, given its role to interact or to have roles on other standing committees within town government. We do have a town government study committee, I believe that has been impaneled and perhaps they might re review your recommendation. So I'm sorry I missed sharing that with you before the vote, but it was just a point of information. Thank you, Deanne. Uh, Matt, a comment? No, De Deanne is right. And uh, yeah, the, the charge for the finance committee is to, it's not just town meeting, it's to review any and all uh, expenditures before or after they're made and uh, report on them in writing to the select board. You know, so that is their role. And, and I think, you know, she, I'm not, and she's pretty right about the practice as well. Uh, so uh, again, this was our request to the select board. If, if we want to amend that, we certainly can, but I think it will be up to the select board to approve um, any additional seats in, in whatever form they choose to make them. Uh, but we did include the Capcom as uh, uh, the potential for holding that seat. So I think we can go forward, uh, but I'll entertain anyone who wants to make a motion to amend our recommendation. Uh, Joanna, comment? Um, just, two, just two things. Um, when I got appointed as an at-large member to this committee, John Giorgio weighed in on whether or not I was allowed to do so, and he said that I was, number one. And number two, I think at the request specifically of Deanne, and then number two, um, there is a standing member from finance committee on Capcom and there is a standing member from finance committee on CRC. But the, I think the point of difference was that those are, they're not regulatory committees. And neither are we, thank you, Joanne. Right. Exactly. All right. Does anybody want to amend the motion or should we move forward? It sounds like we're fine. Um, and it's like, of course, we have the discretion to uh, accept the recommendation or to change it. Uh, so the, the only other thing, if we wanted to continue with the discussion of March 22nd, uh, and I apologize, we got a little bit out of order with the end's public comment. Uh, but it did seem to be relative uh, uh, related to the discussion we we're having. Uh, Vince, can you put up the agenda for March twenty second with the um, talking the topics that we had under consideration? And just generally, they were on the broader scope of the committee. Uh, 
we did not have all of our members present on March 22nd. So in particular, I wanted to make sure that members who are present today uh, had the opportunity to weigh in on some of those questions. Uh, and so I'll get them back up in a second. Um, so the first question, do we want to become a permanent committee and suggest a staggered appointment calendar? If so, uh, we've already answered that with the recommendation we voted to submit today. Um, do we have the right number of members on the committee and best representation of stakeholders for implementing the coastal resilience plan? Or do we want to add, subtract, or change seats? Uh, I think we've answered that as well with our additional request from today. Um, the next point was, do we want to maintain our focus on the coastal resilience plan or expand it to include addressing climate change in general and or sustainability issues and or any other subjects? So why don't we start there, uh, particularly with members who are not present for that discussion. Are there any further comments um, or questions about that topic? Uh, not seeing any. Uh, Jen, I'll go ahead. Thank you, Mary. I was not present at the last meeting and I haven't had a chance to review the discussion that happened. So uh, maybe a, a summary of that, you know, <laughs> just to know if there was a direction that the committee was going. Um, but as far as my thoughts on it, I think that at least at this point with the CRP and the amount of work that's going to go into that, I would hate to see our focus um, diluted, I guess, by, folk, by turning to discussing some of those even bigger issues, those discussing climate change in a broader sense for the island and discussing sustainability. I obviously think those are all extremely important things for the island to be working on, um, but I would, I guess my uh, preference would be for this committee to continue focusing on coastal resilience and the CRP while we have actionable items there, um, as opposed to diluting our focus. I think that there are, or hope that there are other methods that we can have the town and the community focusing on sustainability and climate change. Thank you, Jen. And, and I think there were other people um, two weeks ago that, that had this a similar sentiment. Any other comment, uh, Gary? You know, what we learned uh, at the last meeting from the presentation by, from that, uh, from Nantucket Resiliency, I forget the name, the official name, but the survey basically said that on the island of Nantucket, they really are, it's really all the same thing because People don't think of climate change separately because our issues are so much more related to rising, you know, storm surges and rising tides. And that's why the survey kind of lumped them two together. That is the way that folks in Nantucket think about it. And so I, I think we shouldn't have to worry that people are going to start focusing on climate change separately and not thinking more about the issues that we are more specific about. That's just what. I concluded from that survey. Thanks. Thank you, Gary. Further comments or questions? Um, so am I correct that there does not seem to be an appetite within the committee to uh, dramatically change or expand the focus beyond the mission statement that we have already? I think that was the consensus that I'm hearing. Okay. Uh, so the next item is, do we want to continue as an advisory committee, change to an action committee, and is there a regulatory function that would be appropriate? Um, briefly summarizing the meeting from two weeks ago, uh, I think the answer was that there aren't very many avenues for us to change from being an advisory committee. Um, but Stephen uh, did have a comment about a council. And Vince, I was on the town's website and saw we do have councils. I'm not sure what the specific structure and function of a council is. Maybe that's something we can take a look at and come back about. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Yeah, just to say that there's um, basically just four committee structures and everything goes into one of those four groups. Um, advisory, oversight and regulatory are the kind of three that are open to us because the only other one is effectively um, advisory, which sorry, oh, I can't remember what it's properly called, but it's select board and that's select board alone. Um, so whether it's uh, because we'd need 
a whole rewrite of things to become uh, oversight regulatory uh, and enabling legislation that makes it quite difficult that's why it's advisory the use of the term council is really interesting so it's when you set up a committee um what name do you want to apply to it? Do you want it to be a council, a board, a committee, a commission, whatever? But it doesn't matter where you use council. It's how does it fit into any one of the three, four existing committee structures is the question. Thank you, Vince. Like for the sake of argument, sorry, uh, the tree mm -hmm. advisory council is an advisory committee of sorts. It's just committee and council being interchangeable words. Peter? Yeah, I just want to reiterate what I said at the last meeting, that we just don't want to draw flack. We want to continue to advise. Um, um, so, you know, the, even though oversight doesn't mean regulatory, it still sounds like it, you know, and regulatory, we don't want to be regulatory. Um, I agree with Vincent. Yeah, I think the, the issue with regulatory is that there are no regulations for us to enforce. So first, right. we'd have to create them. <laughs> Um, Ian? Thank you, Mary. So um, I, I was more interested in this, um, having a, at least an advisory role, um, in part because, I'm sorry, an oversight role, because uh, I've certainly, it's my own personal experience in the past is how easy it is for one's advice to be uh, um, ignored. And so I was hoping that, especially with the amount of effort and the, and the broadness of the committee and its knowledge, that it might have a little extra weight. And so I'm wondering if the, the discussion that I missed uh, last time, um, if why uh, that didn't garner um, more support, was it because it was considered to be too difficult to, uh, to go through the uh, political process with the state to have that um, codified? Or was it just a general feeling that um, it wasn't appropriate? Um, thank you. Thank you, Ian. Vince, can you um, recap the oversight committee? Yeah, I'm trying to remember it now from what we discussed last time. I think one of the discussions was this wasn't the kind of only bite at the apple kind of thing. So that is something that could be considered in the future. But at the moment, um, we've basically missed anything for town elect, uh, for, sorry, for town meeting that we could put together in time uh, that that window is closed. So maybe that's something we could revisit in the future uh, to put some things together for next town meeting for the sake of argument to then take something to the state for uh, I think it would have to be through a home rule petition in order to have enabling legislation uh, for oversight committee. Uh, Gary and then Ian. Well uh, thank you that's pretty succinct. I'm <laughs> uh, sorry Gary go ahead. Well uh, first I want to make it clear I, I agree completely with uh, my colleagues here that we should be an advisory committee but I have to disabuse Peter Brace of a, of, a, of a thought process that he explained to us last time and also we repeat it today. Which his, his thought process is that if we're an advisory committee, then we won't get treated to a lot of flack and people complaining. As the chair of the advisory committee, who got a lot of flack in the newspaper from a lot of people who don't agree with my committee's views, that doesn't protect you from getting flagged, <laughs> not in the least, but I don't mind that. Anyway, I don't disagree at all. I think we should be in the advisory committee. Thank you, Gary. Uh, further comments or questions on this item? Pat? Now, I think Ian makes a great point. And I think if over the next year or so, we feel this committee feels as though uh, the urgency hasn't been isn't where it needs to be or the follow-up isn't where it needs to be, then we should be uh, seriously thinking about sort of asking for more responsibility of some type. I don't have the answer right now, but it, uh, he's absolutely right. There's a, you know, we, we have to make sure that we have a, we, we create a culture of getting this done, not a culture of ignoring it. So. Thank you, Matt. So I think the, the uh, general consensus is that we're not asking for a change right now, but it's a topic that we may revisit um, when we have a, a better idea of a timeline and the um, 
the reason for action and the process for it as well. Uh, all right, the next item was, do we feel that one committee is the best structure to address our mission or would we want to recommend creating separate committees or subcommittees dedicated to specific areas, such as we did with the education subcommittee to produce the improving coastal resilience at home for sure. Um, and then suggestions for other topics where zoning, conservation, education, grants uh, might be better addressed with a different committee format. Um, any thoughts on that? Peter? Um, I just think we create them as we need them as we go along. It doesn't make sense to just do one right now because we think we should do it. No, if the need arises, then we create the committee and then the committee gets to work. And I think the question really is, you know, do we see the need arising in the short term? Um, or is that something as Peter is suggesting that we can deal with as it comes? Sarah? Yeah, thank you. Um, as the former chair of our one subcommittee, I think that um, creating something, as Peter said, like as it as it's needed, um, and then there's enough people within the committee that can be part of the subcommittee. Um, I think that that would be a great thing. Um, I think just the example of the educational subcommittee was when we were kind of kind of still figuring out some of our footing as a a committee, and um, while the uh, the, the plan hadn't kind of, we were still in the phases of hiring and, and um, the uh, consultants, et cetera. So anyway, um, the, the problem I saw with the education subcommittee um, was that there were only three of us as part of that committee, which, um, and I don't know if that's a problem. It obviously depends on what the committee is tackling, how many members are part of it and what needs to be taken. Um, but I just think um, thinking through each committee or subcommittee rather, sorry, um, and what the desired outcomes are and what's the purpose of the subcommittee um, are really important. Um, I, I think that it's really helpful to have those subcommittees like really tackle specific topics. And, um, but I know from a committee, the subcommittee where we had a very small membership, it was myself, Mary and um, Graham um, meeting times and things like that and having to post meetings and things like just, it just makes it, it complicates things. So it's a careful thought should be put before we make um, subcommittees, I guess. Thank you, Sarah. Vince? Um, I, I don't need to try and find more work for myself. But I'm going to say it openly. I miss the education subcommittee and the work that that got done. It did terrific things. It really did. And if uh, more subcommittees come up, even for a limited time, and then get reabsorbed again, so be it. Um, to tackle whatever the issue is, it is no extra work, major extra work on my part, uh, to organise a subcommittee. And um, I know it's it, it's just a bit challenging to try and find times and all that kind of stuff. There is exactly right in that, but. You can help. I can help out by making it my problem and trying to organize that. Uh, I don't want that to be the impediment. Thank you, Vince. I appreciate your enthusiasm for more work. <laughs> uh, Jen? Thank you, Mary. Um, I, I think maybe this probably needs to be a longer conversation as far as what are the tasks that we're actually taking on now as a committee, because I think that you know, part of the issue with this with subcommittees is that as a committee itself, we're already meeting twice a month, which is volunteers is a significant time commitment, considering that we're involved in other committees and other things so that if there is a way to break out the work that the committee needs to get done, perhaps subcommittee meetings could end up taking the place of that second meeting a week. It, it, that just might be something to, to think about as far as effectiveness. Thank you. That is a thought that crossed my mind as well. Matt? Uh, I think what's where we're going to need a subcommittee, it's not going to be tomorrow, but is how are we going to pay for these things and the finances and how, what is a, do we have resiliency districts? How much of it is bettered? What isn't bettered? I think that's the type of stuff that will be very difficult to do in a large committee with a bunch of people. I think that should be four or five people and we should be bringing help in on that and you know so anyway that that to me is going to be one, and that came out of the uh meetings we had down at nantucket hotel is that that was going to be one of our big challenges 
the town and or this committee's challenge going forward. So I could see us needing it when we get to that uh, level of discussion. Thank you, Matt. Sarah? Yeah, thanks. Um, just echoing what um, Matt was just saying, I had thought about, you know, we've, we've discussed different ways in the past of um, assisting with grant writing. So I don't know if like um, to assist Vince um, in the work that he's doing, whether it's part of like a kind of finance subcommittee or if there is even a separate subcommittee um, of people that want to work on helping with grant writing, whether it's identifying the grants, um, helping for with the purpose of focusing on closer resiliency, um, organizing the schedule of grant, you know, kind of like, okay, what needs to be applied for by when? Um, because we know like fence is stretched very thin. And I think because we have a specific focus and there's some of us in the community that have that experience um, and expertise or, you know, I, like not once again to make more work for myself, but um, I think those kinds of really targeted subcommittees, I feel like um, are a way to really advance some of the action that we hope to take, but I also want it to fit within what others are doing. And with a like a finance subcommittee, that's still a really big topic, right? And um, and has lots of entity, entities within it, within itself. So like, what's funded by um, <laughs> a town a town meeting override, or what's part of capital budget, I don't even, I don't even know what they're called, but what, you know, I think that um, like the targeted subcommittee of like a grant subcommittee could be, um, you know, working on things in the background and then meeting semi-regularly um, would be, I think quite beneficial. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to say when we were talking about the education subcommittee, just to, I was remembering as we were saying, I remembered that scheduling was really difficult, but that's because we were still meeting in person. So that was just reminding me that actually subcommittees um, are going to be a lot easier um, now that we are still, for now anyway, a bit of, have the ability to work on Zoom. So that's just a, a plug for that. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I, I remember the uh, difficulty, though, of editing a document over Zoom. That was not fun. Uh, Vince? Uh, minor note, um, there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to continue on Zoom after the end of June, extremely good chance we won't have a choice but to go back in, in person. And uh, there is a big question yet, if there would be allowed to be a hybrid element to it, we're still waiting uh, on the review that's going on in the governor's office. Thank you, Vince. I know I have my fingers crossed for continuing to allow Zoom access. I think it's really helpful in some circumstances. Uh, certainly for our committee, where we talk with a lot of people who are off island, it's much easier to do that when we they don't have to come and see us physically. Uh, all right, so I, again, I'm not hearing a consensus for the immediate, um, any immediate change in the committee structure, whether it's subcommittees or, or other committees, uh, but I think it is a worthwhile discussion and certainly something that we can come back to when we do see that there's a need for a targeted um, approach. Jen, and then Joanna. Thank you, Mary. Just real quick, I wonder if it if it's a topic for the next meeting or the meeting after. But I'm just thinking, you know, Vince, you kind of indicated that there was a committee, a subcommittee function that was really useful to you. Maybe that's our next direction of conversation. Is you know, you're the the town person that's putting all these things into effect. So what are the tasks then that we as a as a committee can help you with, and then how can we put those into subcommittees that are more manageable for us? That might be a discussion topic we could explore. Thank you, Jen, that's a great idea. Uh, Vince, any comment before we go to Joanna? Yeah, uh, love the idea. Um, so education was a terrific committee uh, while it was going, um, and it had terrific outcomes, and there's still stuff in it I use regularly from the outcomes. Uh, I get homeowners asking me questions. <laughs> now I have a brochure that I can send them. That is invaluable. When it comes to uh, next stages and things that we need, um, so it's not just grant writing, it's grant research, finding the grants, finding out if the grant is applicable and what project it might uh, work with. That is a huge task in its own. So I I'd horseshoe in grant research and grant writing. Thank you, Vince. Uh, Joanna, you had comments. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts. I guess 
there's probably three comments here. <laughs> One of which is, um, how are we going to uh, include, implement, discuss any of the sort of things that happened at the workshop? I guess that's my first question. The second question is, I would, and how are we going to handle going forward the agenda in this meeting? Are we going to have like standing agenda items like financial discussion or like outreach? You know, because basically from that workshop, the two most important things were financial discussion and outreach. So are they gonna be standing agenda items in this meeting or those things that should be spun into subcommittees? But I feel there's a risk of the subcommittee approach because I think that you know the group needs to be included in these conversations. And um, yeah, so I'm just wondering about what's the best way to do that. Thank you, uh, Vince. Um, yep, so um, I'm waiting on an outcome uh, from that. Um, Arcadas are putting together um, a presentation. It's going to be at select board tomorrow night. Um, so that's where we're going to start to see the beginning of it. I've been trying to get information together to send out to all the stakeholders. It now looks, unfortunately, like it might be after that that I'll have something comprehensive to send um, to everyone. Um, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is. They're still working on it. So what they've done is they put everything into one large file they have started to, they ordered it and put it into a nice presentation format. We're still uh, fixing the presentation, getting it completed. It's, it's nearly there. It's almost there, but it's just the tweaks. It's um, not in a, in a final format to be able to send to people yet. I, I do apologize about that. Um, but once we do have that, that would then inform exactly what Joanna is asking. Thank you, Vince. And that anticipates the final uh, bullet on the list. Um, the recommendation from the Coastal Resilience Plan to create an interdepartmental working group. Uh, it was my feeling that the workshop that we had in March was uh, a, a great you know, groundwork laying step for that. Uh, and I think we probably want to wait until we have the report back from Arcadis on that workshop um, and everybody's had a chance to discuss that before we go any further on the topic of how does that group potentially relate to the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee. Uh, but if anybody has thoughts now, you're welcome to share them. It's uh, not so that nothing's hidden. This is also going to be a topic at the select board tomorrow night. We had the first discussion on of this group yesterday. We're trying to um, finalize membership. We're pretty much there, but just trying to figure out one or two small things and um, the structure. Um, so that's something that's in process only since yesterday, not a, not a finished uh, article yet either. Thank you, Vince. Um, any further questions or comments from committee members on the um, items that were on the agenda for March 22nd? If not, we can close that topic and then move on to other public comment for today. Are there members of the public that have other uh, questions for us today? Uh, thank you for taking down the screen share, Vince. So I'm not seeing any, uh, so we can move on to new business committee and natural resources department reports. Uh, Vince is preparing the first quarterly report on, uh, it, it's not necessarily on the activities specifically of the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee, but on coastal resilience efforts um, sort of that, that he is spearheading as well as what we're doing. Uh, Vince, did you wanna share anything on that today? Um, still drafting it. I'm anticipating having something in about a, uh, a week for the next, um, committee meeting. I have to say that at tomorrow night's um, select board meeting, because there's so many overlapping topics, it's starting to look real similar. So just put that out there uh, for a start. Um, I, tomorrow night, I've also been asked to give uh, an update on the Coast Resilience Plan. I'm just going to very briefly discuss the 40 recommendations and where some of them stand. Some of them uh, have significant interest in um, outcomes from design thinking workshop. So I'll have uh, information on that too tomorrow night. So here's the downside. I'm still making that presentation and uh, I've been uh, requested from uh, town admin to have it in ASAP. Um, it's nearly done too, um, but it's a simple kind of three slide presentation. Um, that's that one. Um, so Vince, before you go on, so it, it is just now occurring to me that 
um, there might be enough interest from Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee members that we show up um, you know, individually tomorrow night at Select Board. We have not posted an attending agenda. Um, do we have anything that we should be aware of for tomorrow night? That, it, you know, the main discussion. Solution? Yeah, the main discussion is on um, the outcomes and some of the priorities that came from the design thinking workshop, um, as well as information on how the, the two day event went. Um, so, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't think there's an issue um, or on NCTV or whatever it happens to be. Um, if you wanted to comment on it individually, uh, I don't think there's that much of an issue there, provided there isn't a quorum of comments on screen. That's when we do hit an issue. Um, but yeah, for, for most people, it's things that you've either heard here before or issues you're extremely well aware of. Thank you, Vince. Uh, and uh, were you about to move on to another item? Um, if that's okay. Yeah. So um, just want to, uh, maybe I should just pass it to Jen. Myself and Jen have been working on this together. So um, people have heard enough from me. <laughs> Thank you, Jen, can you go ahead? Absolutely. Thank you, Vince and Mary. So uh, what Vince is referring to is that we're hoping to hold a meeting um, next next week, uh, April 14th at 11 a.m. Um, and this is going to be an opportunity for the Woods Hole Group consultants to do a report out on the analysis work that they did on the Coscata Kotu refuge for TTR and NCF. So if you'll recall, we've, we've mentioned this at meetings before, uh, we, the two organizations hired Woods Hole Group previously to do an analysis of the areas on the refuge that we deemed most vulnerable to erosion. Um, and they've done that analysis work. They've provided some options or beginning options for discussion. And one of the things that we hired the, or tasked the consultants with was to give a kind of technical report out of what that process was, what they learned, and what their recommendations are. So that's what this meeting is. And in talking with Vince, um, we realized that we were obviously going to want to invite the Coast Resilience Advisory Committee to hear this technical report out. Um, so Vince is going to look at, at scheduling that as a, a posted meeting so that we can have everyone there in attendance, ask questions, um, and be able to have a discussion about the results of the work that Woods Hole did. And again, Jen, that is Thursday the 14th at 11 a.m. right now is the schedule? Thursday the 14th at 11 a.m. and Vince was going to, based on the feedback from this meeting, work at um, putting the, the meeting invitation together and the agenda for it. Uh, so to segue briefly into our meeting schedule. So I am sensitive to the fact that we have been scheduling a number of extra meetings recently. <laughs> Uh, so we have some options. We could decide not to meet on the 12th uh, if we feel that we'd uh, want to meet you know, on the 14th as part of this agenda item. And if that was the case, uh, our regular next regular meeting would be the 26th. Uh, of course, we have options to change and use the 19th, it's, uh, but there is no longer the sense of urgency that I was anticipating in getting the recommendation to the select board as we have pushed that. Uh, so uh, I guess first we want to see maybe a show of hands, uh, committee members who are interested in attending on Thursday the 14th at 11. Uh, Mary, before that, oh, point, if I just say one thing. I, I'm very sorry for intruding. Um, I just have to make it 100% clear. Um, the, um, the report out is effectively part of a fulfillment of one of the CRP recommendations for recommendation 4-3 for code 2 erosion mitigation and dune resilience. Now this was 100% uh, an NCF and TTOR project, it is theirs, but it is in the CRP and it is um, this organization fulfilling that and that is the interest for the committee because it is a CRP recommendation. Thank you Vince, I appreciate that additional information and clarification. Um, so, a uh, show of hands on committee members, how many expect to want to attend on Thursday? Uh, let's take Ian's comment first. Uh, sorry, Ian, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mary. So, um, for, unfortunately, speaking for myself, I won't be able to attend certainly the start of it. And so, uh, Jen, will it be recorded so that we'll be able to see it afterwards? Yes, yeah, so it, it will be an official Coast Residence Advisory Committee meeting, assuming that we have a quorum, and it will be recorded under that umbrella. 
Great, thank you. Um, all right, so one, one more shot at this. Can we get a show of hands of members who are uh, interested in attending on Thursday the 14th at 11? Just raise your hand would be good. So I see three, four. Um, so four will not be a quorum, Vince. How does that change things? Uh, well, Jen will be there as well. Jen, Jen and you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> so Jen will be a quorum. Okay, so we will post that as an official meeting. It will be recorded. Uh, we do need a quorum to show up so that it is an official meeting and we appreciate um, the people who are flexible enough to make that happen. Um, so the next question is, should we also meet on the 12th or should we scratch that? Uh, Jen, do you have a comment before we go to that? I just had a quick question on technicality, Mary, that if we post the meeting, um, post it as a, as a crack meeting, this presentation, and we hold it on Thursday and we don't have a quorum, we're obviously still going ahead with the presentation and the meeting and the people that we've invited. We'll still record it and it will still be available. We just won't necessarily have the, the crack quorum and that formality associated with it, correct? Vince? Yeah, it also brings up the question about um, if there's um, not a quorum and there is deliberation, I don't think it's that much of an issue, but I will check it out. So I'm, I'm anticipating that there would be deliberation. But that is something for me to check. Thanks, Vince. Uh, so again, I appreciate everybody's flexibility. Um, what do we want to do about our regularly scheduled meeting date on the 12th? Sarah? I just had a question. I know like originally when we talked about all these extra meetings, it was because of the urgency. Do we, if we don't meet on the 12th, when would be our next regular meeting? And then um, what topics do we, like what, is there an immediacy to, does Vince need any, discussions about anything coming forward, just it helps gauge um, the kind of urgency, I guess, of another recent meeting. So our next scheduled meeting date would be the 26th. That's the last Tuesday in April. Um, so that would be three weeks from today. And Vince, is there anything in the next three weeks? Uh, do we have anybody scheduled for the 12th? I don't remember anybody. We don't. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we had set that aside for uh, continuing this uh, the, the earlier discussion about uh, the committee's future. So that's that done. What I, I'm thinking about the 26th and what I had been thinking was the um, the initial uh, uh, structure of the CZM um, application and wanting to put some information in front of the committee at that point. I'm um, after getting some uh, from uh, Arcadis and we're still working through it, but I have nothing ready. But by that stage, I should. So it'll be about uh, the CZM application. Further questions? Yeah, so as, as chair, I don't have anything that is particularly sensitive to the 12th um, and the 26th, I think would work fine for the committee. So we have, it looks like a consensus that um, we'll do our best to have an official meeting on the 14th with a quorum present at the trustees and uh, conservation foundation presentation. And then our next regularly scheduled meeting would be the 26th and we will not meet on the 12th. I don't think we need to vote on that. That's just, I, I make it so. <laughs> uh, any further updates from other committees or from Vince? Um, no, Baxter Road is uh, chugging along. Uh, the road relocation is where most of my focus is going. I have very little to report on that other than we're continuing our research phase. Thank you, Vince. Um, I'll just note that the uh, international, or excuse me, intergovernmental um, panel on climate change did release another report, um, and we are planning to bring those reports back as a topic um, to see how they might affect the work that we do here on Nantucket. Uh, but it's nice to have all, all of them out um, and discuss them as a whole. All right, I think we have reached the end of our agenda. If anyone would like to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Sarah. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, Matt, do you have a comment before we- Yeah, just one more comment. I, I didn't get it in when we were talking about select board tomorrow night. One of the uh, HDC appeal is a pool on Main Ave out in uh, Madiket, which they are struggling with. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure how it's gonna go. You know, The HDC stuff doesn't interest us necessarily, but the fact that we're, 
potentially building a, you know, someone wants to build a pool. I, I think they're outside of CONCOM jurisdiction. So, but it's in an area that's, you know, sort of definitely at risk. So I think if you want to look at our packet, it highlights some of the things that we need to really be thinking about as a, you know, as a community of, you know, tightening up sooner rather than later. So I, I just think it's worth a, a quick read. And if you guys are watching the meeting, you know, HTC can drag on for a while, but I think they, they're feeling the push of having to try to deal with these things when it's not necessarily in their purview, but it kind of is. So it, it, it's worth you guys taking a look. This is all interconnected and we need to sort of start talking about some of the tough issues sooner rather than later. Thank you, Matt. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, roll call vote, Gary Beller. Aye. Sarah Boyce? Aye. Peter Brace? Aye. Matt Fee? Aye. Ian Golding? Aye. Jen Carberg? Aye. Rich McClure? Aye. Joanna Roach? Aye. And Mary Longacre, aye. Thank you all, and I hope we will see you on the 14th, and if not then, on the 26th. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thanks, okay. everyone. I'm just going to stop the recording. <laughs>